Welcome, everyone. We are so excited that you could all join us on this Resurrection Sunday and hope that you are incredibly blessed by today's worship. The story in the book of John where Lazarus dies and then Jesus is raising him from the dead in John 11, starting at verse 25, Jesus tells Martha this. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never ever die. And this is surely the promise to all of us who are his children and who have received Jesus as our Savior and Lord. So won't you join with us and just worship and sing songs of praise to our Savior who has given us life. Lord, we await your coming. And as we give our tithes and our offerings, we would like to invite you to give a special offering as well for this Resurrection Sunday. And as we do, let us lift up this song of declaration, Hosanna, as we sing to our King.
Lord, we declare Hosanna to you, for you are in the highest. Let us join as Reverend Ku prays for us. Dear Heavenly Father, on this Easter Sunday, we come before you celebrating with joy, praise, glory, and many thanks the resurrection of Christ Jesus, your only Son, died on the cross for our sins to give us a new life, eternal life. Hallelujah. As we worship you today, may we ask you to bless our Easter celebration, the pastor's message, and worship team praise songs that whole family of our church community, not only today, but also throughout the year, live, work, and serve in the appreciation of new life and new hope as your grace is enriching us every day. Father God, we are living in the world unlike anything we ever experienced before. Confusion, chaos, pains, and fears has been stirring in the hearts of so many people. We trust that the power belongs in your hand, but we also trust that you have a great plan for us to see the hearts transformed and the lives changed through this difficult time. Father, we want to, to be part of your great redemptive plan in the world. Help us to be humbled to confess our sins and ask you to give us the boldness to proclaim the good news of salvation, the message of hope and new life through risen Christ. For that reason, we ask you to bless and help us as our whole church community is trying hard through EV training, Bible study, and other small group discipleship training so that we can love and serve better, reaching out our neighbors and beyond. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us to give us new life. We pray in Jesus Christ, the precious name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Ku, for a wonderful prayer. You're such a humble man. You're always teaching me. Thank you. And thank you so much for our praise team. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on our Resurrection Sunday. Now, we use the word Easter a lot, but Easter is actually a pagan word. And the day that resurrected was Jesus himself. Pastor Young is going to be continuing his series on what is God saying through Jesus. And today, his topic will be you will never die. Talk about fountain of youth, huh? <laughs> you will never die. So I would like for you to join a Mentimeter uh, question. And before you do, if you see, I have these Easter A, and they have a jelly beans in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jelly beans, right? But you know, a lot of people get confused Easter as Easter eggs and eating jelly beans and egg hunt. But Easter actually has nothing to do with eggs so whatever you have in the eggs but what christians have done is taken that pagan holiday and took the easter and talk about you know there's a body well it's egg because it's hard shells and once this shells cracks so there's a live cheek or bird comes out right but on easter resurrection sunday even though our jesus was put into tomb he's empty he's not there so our jesus is alive so Describe, what is one word would you describe Easter be or Easter as? So I would like for you to do the Mentimeter question. I love those uh, little icon thing that I don't know the code, QR code. I just put my camera on there and it pops right up. And then I would love to hear what your thoughts are. What is one word if you would describe Easter as? And just put it in there and we would love for you to have. But now we have a minute for you to answer that and maybe grab some coffee or a little refreshment, be ready to hear our resurrection story about you will never die. See you right back.
here we are in Raleigh Memorial Park in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. As you can see, we see uh, gravestones and many loved ones lying uh, and resting in this place. And we have eerie feeling about cemetery. Uh, it's because it reminds us of the reality of death, whether we are rich, poor, young, old, and whoever you are, we know that we will face death once uh, when the time comes. So that brings us a lot of thoughts about death and resurrection, which we'll talk about today. So let's walk around this gravestone and think further. Now, would you take a walk with me to see how they're remembered by, by their loved ones? For instance, right here is a couple. One, it says, our family protector forever loved, and the other one, be thou my vision, O Lord, my heart. And then there's a one right over here. There's two, and it says, I thank my God every time I remember you. What a word to help you remember those who are passed on. This one, it says, beloved wife, mother, grandmother will be in our hearts and memories forever. You know, we like to put words or scripture they like on the gravestone so that it helps you to remember and think about them even more. But it is very somber thinking to see all these people once breathe and live like you and I. I have someone I want to introduce you to. This is my mother. This is where she's resting. She passed away 2007 in August, but she was born 1941. She didn't quite make it to her birthday, but we remember as beloved mother, grandmother, and a servant of God. People normally write how they remember their loved ones. Today's Easter Sunday. Bible says Jesus lived, died, and resurrected on Easter Sunday. Does that mean my mother, along with everybody else here who once lived now, now, will they be resurrected? Will they come back to life? What do you think? Well, for me, I believe what the Bible says. And that's where I get the comfort. Although she's not with us now, physically, but I believe she will live again. She will be resurrected with new life, new body. And that's where we get our comfort. But the question is, what do you believe? Happy Resurrection Day. Uh, praise God that Jesus is alive and he's with us. And Easter has to be the most significant day in history. Because on this day, Jesus of Nazareth came back to life three days after Roman government executed him on a cross. Resurrection, uh, the word, is very unnatural. We know dead people don't come back to life. Once you're dead, you are dead. So the claim that Jesus completely died and three days later rose back to life in a body, not in spirit, is shocking, if not crazy. If this happened today, it would be all over the news, right? Resurrection was the central to Jesus' life. Do you know why people killed Jesus? Because he said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days, which meant his own body and his own resurrection. That was the only charge they could come up with to kill Jesus. Do you know when uh, they, people, decide to kill Jesus? When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. That was a problem. Again, it was the resurrection issue. Jesus repeatedly predicted his own resurrection. This was the main reason how he was able to face suffering and death. Resurrection wasn't an afterthought for, uh, for his disciples that they made up later. Resurrection was the central message of Jesus Christ. And Jesus uh, declared in front of high priest that he will come back and he will sit at the right hand of God. And that was very reason why he was sentenced to death. So the resurrection was that much central and important to Jesus Christ. And do you know why disciples of Jesus Christ got persecuted and were killed? Because they claimed that Jesus rose from the dead. If disciples only preached 
the message of the cross that Jesus died, Jesus died, Jesus died, people would not have, uh, would have tolerated that message and would not have persecuted them. But because it was the message of Jesus Christ's resurrection that they were outcasted and they were killed. Faith and hope of resurrection was the ve reason why early Christians were willing to die for Christ. It, was made them, it made them bold and fearless. If you really think about it, throughout centuries, Christ went through, uh, Christians went through unjustifiable persecution and killing because they believed that Jesus Christ conquered death and one day they will be raised back to life and live with God eternally. That hope and that faith was a pillar of Christian faith. Without resurrection, every other doctrine will lose its power. Theologian Greg Gilbert explained this way. The resurrection is the hinge on which all of Christians turns. It's the foundation on which everything else rests the capstone that holds everything else about Christianity together. Which means, crucially, that when Christians assert that Jesus rose from the dead, they are making a historical claim, not a religious one. Yes, of course, there are religious implications to that claim, if you want to call them that, but none of those is in the least valid if Jesus didn't really, truly, historically, come back to life from the dead. He was right. That was the essence of Christianity. Apostle Paul argued this way in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 15, verses 17 through 19. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless, and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if your, our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more than pitied than anyone in the world. Hey, this is a strong statement, right? In other words, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, Christi Christians are the most pathetic people. But if we can flip this same verse in, uh, in a positive way, it will sound like this. 1 Corinthians 15, 17, 19, revised, we say, if and if Christ has been raised, then your faith is powerful and you are free from your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ have hope. And if our hope in Christ is for eternity, we have more than blessed than anyone in the world. Isn't that amazing? Today is the Resurrection Sunday. So let me ask you this. Do you really believe that Jesus rose from the dead in three days? Not right after, but after being dead for three days. Not only God loves you, not only Jesus died for you, not only Jesus cared for you and there is heaven, but do you really believe that Jesus came back to life? And second question is, what does that mean to you now? So this is the key to your confident faith and transforming power and living hope. And today, I want to ask three important questions to all of us. Number one is, who raised Jesus from the dead and why? Second question will be, will we also be raised from the dead someday? And the third question will be, how can we access the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ now in our lives? So let's tackle those questions. Number one, who raised Jesus from the dead and why? Jesus himself? Let's find out. Acts Chapter 2, verse 24 says, Peter is preaching, but God raised him, Jesus, up again, putting an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Remember, Peter personally witnessed the agony of death Jesus went through, and Peter saw Jesus dying. But he said, God raised him up again. Why? Because it was impossible for Jesus to be held in its power. 
Wow, that's a strong statement. What does that mean? That means that the power of death was not strong enough to hold Jesus back. Satan had no ground to keep Jesus there. God had to bring Jesus back to life because of who Jesus was. If, uh, what if Jesus' resurrection, uh, what, what did Jesus', res Jesus resurrection prove? What did, he, what did he prove? There are many different things. Number one is Jesus was sinless. There was no sin in Jesus that needed to be punished. Let's put up the, uh, the scripture. And we'll just stay here all the way uh, th uh, through the last number. So Jesus was sinless. There was no sin in Jesus that needed to be punished. He bore, our, bore the sins of the world, but once he paid it off by his death, there was no reason for his body to decay in the grave. It just simply proves that he was sinless. And through resurrection, God vindicated or exonerated Jesus Christ. And John, 1 John uh, 3, 5 states that. Second thing that resurrection proved was Jesus was God. Jesus is the prince of life, the creator and giver of life. And he had an innate power to lay down his life, he said, and the power to take it back up again. It proves that Jesus was really God. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18 says, I am the first and the last, which means he's God. I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Now, third thing he proved is Jesus' redemptive work is complete. Jesus' resurrection was a clear evidence that he was the Messiah, and what he did was completely accepted by God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 says, But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. Why did Jesus sit down? Because his work was completed and fully in effect. Number four, who Jesus claimed to be and what he taught were all true. People thought Jesus' claims were outrageous, but his resurrection proved that he was right all along. And whatever he said about the future will also come true. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. Fifth, Jesus is alive today. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 says, I, for I have passed on to you the most important points that I received. The Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and is still alive. It simply means that Jesus is alive now in your room where you are, where I am. Jesus is still alive and he is with us. Number six, that resurrection proves this, Jesus will come back again. Luke 21, 27, Jesus said that everyone will see the Son of Man, Jesus himself, coming on a cloud with power and great glory. It just simply proves that Jesus is coming back because he is alive right now. And number seven is heaven is real. Remember, Jesus said, don't, don't worry about it. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. Which basically means heaven is real and there is a place for us to go. Number eight is there is eternity. There is eternity. The resurrection of Jesus Christ proved that there is life after death and that how you spend your eternity will depend on what you do here on earth. And uh, Revelation 20 uh, says that, that he will reign forever and ever. Number nine, lastly, the resurrection of Jesus Christ changed everything for good. For instance, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 55 and 57, Paul declares, O oh death! Where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thanks God, 
thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changed everything. Everything about our destiny, everything about our spirituality, just it changed everything. That is why the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest and the most significant and most altering event in the whole universe. We need to understand that this is really significant event that we are celebrating. And this is why not believing and not living by the resurrection power will be the greatest loss for anyone. So the challenge is this. Do you really believe it? I know many of you know it. I know many of you heard about it. I know many of you just take it. But my question is, do you really, truly believe the historical and an impact of Jesus' resurrection by your heart, then everything will change. Now, the second question is this. Will we also be raised from the dead? This is a really interesting question. I mean, once you die, once you die, you are dead. That's fine. We all know that from biology class, from science, right? Once you die and your body starts decaying, that's the end of it. There's no way that dust and, and these chemistry compounds can come back to life. But Bible says that resurrection of human beings are definite. So the answer is resounding yes. And the question is, are there instances of resurrection in the Bible? And amazingly enough, yes. In the Old Testament, let's look at the list. Elijah uh, raised a young boy, according to the first king. Elisha raised the son of woman of Shunem after he died. In the Old Testament, Jairus, Jesus rose Jairus' daughter. When she was completely dead, he rose her back up. And we know from John uh, chapter 11 that Jesus uh, waited for Nazareth's death. And then after three days of decomposing, Jesus brought the Lazarus back to life. And when Jesus was crucified, and at, his, at the moment of de his death, the Bible says in Matthew 27, many saints went, came back to life, and they walked around the city. So that everybody was able to witness. Amazing, right? Now, Peter, Apostle Peter, raised Dorca, the, the generous woman, back to life after she was died. She died. Paul raised Eutychus, who was sleeping while he was preaching, and he fell, he died. Peter, uh, Paul, brought him back to life. So r the idea of resurrection is not, no, no, not strange in the Bible. Do you know when Jesus sent out his disciples to the ministry, Jesus instructed them in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, heal the sick, raise the dead. Can you imagine that? Jesus commanded his disciples to raise the dead. It was fully expected that by the power of God, resurrection of the body was possible. We know early uh, Christians had clear understanding about their own resurrection because Paul wrote to them in a letter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. And if you have this, let's read it together. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so that you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. Why is Paul writing this? Because if you don't understand this, you will get discouraged you will lose your hope. But conversely, Paul is saying, because there is resurrection for the believers, we have hope. And he continues, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And for as by a man for as by a man came death, and by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive.
but each of his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. It simply means Jesus Christ was the first fruit of resurrection, right? And because he opened the door of believers' resurrection, everyone who followed, who died in Jesus Christ, will be resurrected someday. And Bible is quite clear on that. Let's we see what Jesus said in John chapter 5, 28, 29. Do not marvel at this. In an hour, for an, uh, an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice, God's voice, and will come forth. Those who, uh, who uh, did uh, the good deeds uh, to a resurrection of life, those who committed the evil deeds to a resurrection of judgment. So let's really think about this. At the end, all right, at the end, everyone, Christians and non-Christians, everybody will be raised back to life. Good people who died justly will be raised back to life. Bad people who killed many and did so much harm to the humanity, they will all be raised to life. Young people, old people, you know, some of your baby, parents, spouse, children, and friends who died, in, uh, who died will also be raised to life. And everyone will stand before God to be judged. This is something that we need to understand. Everybody will stand one day before God. The criteria for judgment is whether your name is written in the book of life or not. Why uh, would your name be in the book of life? Because you were made right with God. Which means if your sins are forgiven, if you are reconciled with God, if you are made righteous before God and adopted as the children of God on this earth, and naturally God will put your name in the book of life and God will accept you in his own place. But if your name is not found in the book of life, no matter how much uh, you know, sin you have committed and how good deeds you have done, you will be excluded from that privilege and you will naturally be taken to hell, which is meant to punish the sinners, the Satan, and you will be in constant agony and torture forever and ever. I know it sounds awful, but this is the reality everyone will face one day. Please understand, we don't, want, we don't uh, get to say anything about this. Remember, we're already dead. <laughs> this is God's domain. God has the final say. And God, it, it, everything will be on at God's mercy and justice. But don't get upset about it because we still can do something about it. That's the good news. Right? Because this is truth, this is some, something that will happen at the end of our death. We now, those who are listening to my message, have chance to do something about it. Until you take your last breath. If you are still conscious though, you still have the, the opportunity. So that's why this becomes a great news that everybody needs to hear. Everybody needs to accept. So God says those who died in Christ will be raised back to life. This is really comforting to everybody. Like Pastor Kathy said, she believes that her mom will be raised to life and that they will be able to see each other one day. It's a great comforting, right? For those who are ailing with, uh, with terminal disease, this is, a, it is comforting. I know my body is perishing. I know I will die someday, but I know my body will be refurbished <laughs> in a way to a perfection and I will receive brand new body, right? And, and this is also comforting to those who are suffering in this world. I know this world is not perfect. We are still aching and there is no, no justice. There are pain, sickness, heartaches and struggles, natural disaster. We are lacking in many different things. Just believing that yes, when Jesus comes, I will be raised to life again and there will be peace, unity, joy, justice in heaven. That 
is comforting. That is powerful. That's why all those Christians in, in, in history were able to bet their life on the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were willing to die. They didn't mind losing their life for the sake of getting the eternal life in Jesus Christ. This is this powerful. The question is this, do you really believe that? Because Paul says, don't grieve like those who have no hope, but encourage each other with these words, which means this is encouragement to all of us. And let's hear Jesus once again. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? No, right? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. So the answer is yes. We and you and I will be raised to life one day because Jesus became the first fruit of resurrection. Now let's go to the third question. The third question is, how can we access the resurrecting power now? So we talked about in the past, uh, Jesus rose from the dead historically. So we know the past and the future, that our future resurrection will happen someday. We need to ask, what do I do now? Between this past and future reality, what should be my present reality, right? So past is clear and future is secured. And how can I bring that reality into my life as I struggle daily? Now we need to go back to Romans chapter 6. First thing we find here is know who you are. Knowing who you are is the most powerful thing in your life. He says, well then, should we keep on sinning so that God, he's basically saying, you know, should we just live on as life as usual, right? And he's, he's saying that how can we continue to live in sin? But in verse 3 right here, it says, Oh, have you forgotten that when you are joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, you joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Which basically means when you believe in Jesus Christ, you died with Christ. You died to the power of sin. You died to yourself. You died to this world because you had no power over death. But that's not the end of the story. In verse 6 says, We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Jesus Christ so that sin might lose its power in our, in our lives. When we are no longer slaves to sin, but when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Now he's, he's just defining our identity. All right? Listen up. Our identity is in Jesus Christ. When you join Christ, you are dead to power of sin because you are weak and, and we are, you are powerless. But your all identity, another identity is that you united with Jesus Christ and you rose from uh, the dead, from death, and you have new life. Just understanding this identity will give you power. That, yeah, I'm powerless, but Jesus conquered death. But the life that I'm living is I'm living with Jesus Christ in a raised uh, identity and Christ's power is in me. So second thing uh, that we understand is we are raised with Christ to a new life, to a purpose, and to the, the glory of God. Because in verse 10, it uh, says, if you look right here, but now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. And so you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Now, second uh, way that we can live by the power of Jesus Christ is live purposely. And verse 12 says right here, do not let sin control your way, way uh, to the way, of way you live. 
Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let your part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. One way is to give everything, our body, our resources, our time, our passion, our ambition for the glory of God. When we live for the purpose of glorifying God, then we live by the power of resurrection. But third way is by ushering the resurrecting power in our lives. When Paul prayed for the believers in Ephesus, he just loved them. He cared for them. He prayed for them every day. But in his prayer in chapter 1, he says, he, uh, I pray that you would have spiritual wisdom and insight, and I pray that you would have confident hope. I, I pray that you would know calling and rich and glorious inheritance that you have in Jesus Christ. But he understood that is very, very hard. Knowing and living it out is really, really hard. Then what does he pray next? In verse 19, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. So what is he praying? He's praying for the power to, to, to raise us up to live a different type of life. But that power is not normal, regular power. It's not power that we are trying to generate. It's the power that raised Jesus Christ from death to life. That same power, bigger than the creation, bigger than anything else in this world, he prayed that would be ushered into your life so that you can live an uncommon life that is only possible through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. As, as believer, we know the Holy Spirit resides us. And Holy Spirit's power is the resurrection power. So later, uh, Paul, I love this expression, he says in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, that we ourselves are like fragile clay jars. We are fragile. We have to understand. We have to admit that. We are going to be broken by any, any things. But he says, containing this great treasure. And uh, this makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. And what happens? Because we have that resurrecting power in us, he says in verse 8, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus, the resurrecting power of God, may also be seen in our lives. Hey, Friends, this is the power that we need more. Not our best effort, not our own zeal and eagerness. That is not enough. For those who are believing in Jesus Christ, you've tried, you've tried, and you failed. No wonder why. Because you are not tapping into the supernatural power that raised Jesus Christ from death to work in your life. We need to tap into this. I'm, I'm going to explain a little more about uh, future sermons. But as we know the secret of bringing resurrecting power in our lives, our lives will be a different level of achievement and accomplishment for the glory of God. So Peter asks in, in chapter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and 3, he says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to His great mercy, has caused us to be born again. Why? To a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So let me ask you this. Do you have this living hope? Not dead hope, not written hope, not hopeful hope, but living hope. It's living 
because Christ is that hope. Not certain doctrine, but Christ himself living in you and going with us is hope itself. Living hope is the power that we all need. So let's go back to the same question. Jesus said, you will never die. You will never experience death. Was Jesus right? I mean, Jesus raised Lazarus back to life. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. If you believe in me, you will never die. Do you think that was fantasy? That was just make-believe? I know that is true. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will never die. Your physical body may die and will die someday for many different reasons. But you will be raised back. And in essence, your spirit, who you are, will never die. That is the power of Jesus' resurrection. But it's not only future hope, but it's acting power that is in our lives. Whatever you are struggling with right now, if you are struggling with depression, hopelessness, bodily ache, sickness, and financial difficulties, loneliness, whatever you are suffering, believe that the power of resurrection can lift you up can ignite you to overcome and conquer all the obstacles so that you can live with Christ. You can live eternity right now through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this is the Easter message. Let's receive that. Jesus did alive, did come back to life from the dead, one. Future Jesus, we will all be raised to life in the future. But that presence, the power is with us right now. And I pray that your life will be transformed because of Jesus' resurrection. Let us all pray. Let me ask you the same question. Do you really believe it? Do you really believe it? Or do you just know it? Do you just accept it? But what if you really, literally, historically believed in the resurrection and lived by it? You will be able to tap into supernatural power of God. You will have hope that no nothing can take away. You will have the power that can conquer anything, even death. That is the message of the resurrection day. Ask yourself, do I really believe it? If I believe it, then what should I do? And for those people who are not Christian yet, this is a great opportunity. Friends, this is, you have opportunity now to change your eternity. Receive in Jesus Christ. Believe that He's your Savior. Repent of your own sin and come to God in His term so that you can forever be saved and death cannot separate you from the love of God. Oh God, I pray that this message would ring in the, in the deep side of our soul, that it would take us, energize us, and lead us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we are uh, going to take uh, communion. Uh, uh, some people call it Lord's Supper, uh, many different ways, but Jesus really did ask the believers to remember him uh, taking communion. Uh, I'm gonna read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23. Paul says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and uh, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So how do we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ? We celebrate by observing the communion in a biblical way. So 
uh, Pastor Kathy, how should we, uh, can we more realistically and uh, experientially remember Jesus Christ? Th that's the reason why we either delivered or mailed out a package. And within your package, if you would gather your package and open it up, mm. because we wanted you to partake with us. So we send it to those who are abroad or far, and those we were able to deliver, we did. And I was, uh, I found out a couple of you guys didn't quite get it yet. For some reason, I don't know. Mm. And when I call post office, they blame COVID. <laughs> but we'll see. So in the packet, there's several items. But in that items, you should have this. And that does give you uh, instructions what they all for. But for now, I'd like for you to take out mm -hmm. this so that you have that and make sure you have this nail as well because we're going to need both of them but right now in your hand i would like to grab a nail because we have to mail and everything's by weight when i had to mail i use a smaller nail and some of them delivering there's a smaller nail too but we put a nail in there for you to be reminded because jesus wants us to be reminded that nail that you hold in your hand, probably much bigger and heavier and rugged, mm. it pierced into his hand, both of them, and also into his feet. But before he was even pierced, he was scorched pretty bad. And according to Romans law, there's three different stages of scourging in the back. And that lashes, 40 lashes minus one for that one extra grace, they say. But there are three, one just to scare you, and then the second, so that wouldn't be as bad, but the second one is to get you to, come, uh, how would I say, repent or even tell you, uh, admit that it was your fault. And the third, they know you're gonna die, so they're gonna just tear you so that you wouldn't be hanging uh, on the cross very bad, so that you would die quickly. Our Jesus took number three. They scourged him pretty bad, and they said they do it so bad that sometimes in trail, inside organs and muscles, all, sh it's very visible. So our Jesus just did not get, mm lashes it was a very gruesome brutal lash and the reason he took it fully for you and i to remember the degree of sin what sin does to us and the worst thing for him is that he separates us from him so i want you to take this nail and fill it and maybe even want to try and see how it feels to even put it in a i mean it's not hard but can you imagine if it was nailed to you we don't want to just go over this day as just as what it was. Good Friday, as last, uh, I shared with you last week, he died three o'clock on Good Friday and Sunday morning he rose on the third day. So that was the nail that we wanted you to have to kind of actually feel and remember, my Jesus suffered, pierced for me so that I can be healed. Mm -hmm. So let's say all together, Jesus, we remember your suffering Jesus, and death. Jesus, we remember your suffering and death. The second item that I want to uh, take out is the stone, uh, which says resurrection, handwritten by All our, our church here. members from uh, New Spring Church. And this stone uh, represents the stone that uh, blocked the tomb of Jesus Christ. You know, Romans and Pharisees and high priests, uh, they all knew that Jesus said uh, before that he would rise again. So they uh, did extra, uh, put extra measure to make sure that Jesus <laughs> doesn't rise from the dead. So one thing was that they uh, put a huge rock in front in, in the, at the entrance of the tomb mm -hmm. so that no uh, you know, battered person, or no one can easily move. It, it would take mem uh, many men, man strong manpower, mm -hmm. to remove it. But then, amazing thing is, on the on the resurrection day morning, it was moved by the angel, by the power of God, that uh, that Jesus uh, just came out of it. Yes. So this, let's hold this, and then feel the weight. And this, let's say, this is. It can be your discouragement, your sins, past sins, you know, your sickness, everything that is holding you from experiencing the life that uh, God is trying to give. Let's believe that Jesus, God himself, removed. removed this stone away so that you can experience new life. So here's another remembrance. Jesus 
resurrection. Some of the stones says risen, some of them says resurrection, mm -hmm. and the sizes that we mailed were smaller so that we're able to mail it to you. But just be encouraged, it has been removed. So now, let's take the cup and, and the bread, uh, which is on the other side. And it's really convenient, isn't it? So you let, uh, if you don't have this, uh, you can go to the kitchen, grab any drink, bread. any bread, mm -hmm. and just, it's uh, symbolic. So you just go ahead and bring it, yeah. and we're going to uh, all celebrate Join us. Uh, it's together. to symbolify us, uh, exemplify and remember his body was broken for us, and he bled for us. So grab any drink or any bread. Mm -hmm. But if you have this, don't go to the drink side. Get the bottom where the bread <laughs> is first. Right. So uh, th th Jesus said, uh, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And next, Paul says, in the, in the same way, after supper, uh, supper. He, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So bread and drink. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the bread. But before you even take that into your mouth, maybe you can just take a brief yeah. moment and reflect. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, take a moment of silence, remembering his death, remembering his resurrection and what that means to each one of us. And uh, after a while, Pastor Kathy will pray for the communion and we, got, we are going to all take it together. Father God, we're so grateful that your love is so great that it covers our wrongdoings and our sins, that you are able to really go through the horrendous death, died on that cross and suffer through as you were thinking about each and every one of us. And then you overcame sin so that we can be forgiven and you didn't stay dead. After three days, you came back to life to show that you are the life, you are the resurrection, so that we too can have life with you forever. So Lord, we're so grateful. I pray those who are partaking the bread and the blood for remembrance of you, that you would bless each one of them and that you would refresh them, renew them, you cleanse them to give them the new resurrected time as they can move forward to represent you, live out for you so that our life, the purpose you have given us would be uh, lived through in the name of Jesus. So we praise you and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's take this with thanksgiving. Uh, if there's any sin uh, in our lives, let's repent as well. And let's take the bread together. And flip it. And let's take the drink, which symbolizes his own blood. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we once again pray and commit ourselves to you. And we thank you more than anything else for giving your life to us so that we may live. Lord, we pray that we would be able to live by your grace, live by your power. And also, we will be able to proclaim this news until you come back again. Give us that burden. Give us that courage to preach the good news to other people. As, uh, as long as we are alive. So Lord, we thank you. Let this element become spiritual power in us to be overcomers and conquerors in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, the, now the last item is, is the, the little ball that we sent out. Some of you have green, some of you have pink, some of you have blue, some of you have yellow, purple, and okay. orange. Okay, you have this. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. So here it's the ball, and this, this is the idea. You know, whenever we get stressed, because this is stress ball, <laughs> and whenever you're stressed, you know, they want to squeeze it to relieve the stress. But if you look at the ball, my ball says believe. Your ball says hope. Okay. Some of you says love. So <laughs> Some says dream. So we're going to have to pump out Trust. what is inside us, right? As the, you know, the 
the treasure in a jar of clay? Exactly that principle. Jesus has given us belief, hope, and some of you have love. faith and love and dream. And then some of you have that trust, all that. But it's our job to believe in that and pump it out whenever we are stressed, whenever we are pressed, whenever we are discouraged, <laughs> whenever we are put down, right? Whenever we are waiting, we should not lose our hope and we need to just squeeze out, believe, believe. What does it just say? Hope. Hope. Squeeze out hope. hope. Squeeze out love. Okay. Squeeze out. You, you have to faith. say it. Hope. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> believe. I mean, this may sound silly, but we have to squeeze it out. What's inside us? That's the resurrecting power. It takes faith to exercise it and make it into our reality. So let's squeeze, let's squeeze, and keep on living for the Lord. Yeah, we just want to bless you and thank you for partaking. Yes. Now just wait for the, what Tracy and Johnny has for you. You're right. So let me pray for you as you go, and then Johnny and Tracy will come out and uh, give us an uh, uh, announcement. Now the grace and amazing love of Jesus Christ and overpowering love and power of resurrection of God and presence and empowerment of the Holy Spirit be with all of us as we believe in Jesus Christ and as we go by the power of resurrection into the world to preach this good news, bless and blessing and power be upon all of us. In Jesus' name, we pray and bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hyung and Pastor Kathy. What an amazing way to be able to celebrate Easter together, all virtually, have communion together, and just remember God um, with the same items in our homes. And if you didn't have a, or didn't receive an Easter package, that's no problem as well. We're so really glad you're able to worship with us today. Absolutely. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Today we are just so grateful. I'm just grateful um, because through Jesus' death, uh, he has saved our lives, and through his resurrection, we are hopeful for the future. So today is just such a special day. I hope everybody can just go out and enjoy it for uh, the gift that was given to you. Um, so moving on, uh, let's get into our announcements. Let's see what's in store for this week. In one second. All right. So, of course, we're going to start off with our friendly reminder of the Living Life Daily Devotionals. So, once again, you can either go directly on their website or go to a YouTube channel where a pastor dives into the scripture with you. Uh, and also, we have our Devote Talk groups. Um, this is throughout the week. We have six different groups at six different times. Uh, please see on the screen um, which group would fit you, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you there. All right, and our Korean ministry is going back to their weekly events. So remember, they were embarking on a 40-day uh, morning meetings of prayer, and now that it is Resurrection Day, they are going to be meeting on Thursday evening for a prayer meeting at 7.30 p.m. and Saturday early morning at 7.30 a.m., all of which is on Zoom. And now to our birthdays. We didn't have any last week, but I guess today would be a second birthday for Jesus because he's uh, resurrecting today. Um, but our April birthdays, we have Erica, <laughs> Tiffany, and <laughs> Helen. Uh, so if you see them throughout this month, uh, please wish them a happy birthday. Last but not least, we are going to continue to include this as a friendly reminder for everyone. Please feel free to reach out to Pastor Hyung and or Pastor Kathy for any help, support, advice, guidance, all of the above in times of need, whenever you feel like that support would be welcome. They are more than welcome to, more than happy to support. And um, yeah, you can see their number on the screen. You can also email us as well. Absolutely. And now this isn't just your uh, related to church. If, you're, if you have any problems or questions with life, feel free to reach out as they are always um, available. Your mic is not. Oh, Excuse me. Hello, can you guys hear me now? All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, just we just wanted to uh, thank you for joining us on such a special Sunday. Today is a Resurrection Sunday, and it holds a lot of weight as today um, Jesus uh, resurrected to um, take his place in heaven and to really give us hope for uh, our new life. So. And 
all as always we want to remind you guys that you know whenever you listen to a sunday after the sunday service is over it's not like you just shut everything off and continue on with the rest of your day so we really pray and hope that everything that pastor hyung and pastor kathy talked about continues to go with you as you move forward throughout your day this week and the rest of this year absolutely all right last friendly reminder for you guys we're just going to throw up the mentimeter code again on the screen one more time for any questions feedback and prayer requests all of this is anonymous by the way and this will be open until midnight tonight all right well without further ado thank you guys so much once again for joining us and we wish you a happy resurrection day yes and we'll see you guys next week